Income Tax 2023-2024. Itemized deductions, property taxes, and other taxes. Get ready and some coffee so we can recognize the quacks when doing income tax 2023-2024. Most of this information can be found in the instructions for Schedule A tax year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on what I would call the below the line deductions, more specifically the itemized deductions. Remember in the first half of the income tax formula is basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income here having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income noting for taxes deductions are good therefore we're typically looking to have more of them the difference between the above the line or adjustments to income and the below the line deductions in part being the above the line deductions do not have to be clearing a hurdle such as the standard deduction before they start to benefit us however when looking at the itemized deductions they typically do need to accumulate higher than the standard deduction before they become a benefit to the taxpayer looking at the first page of the form 1040 we're focused on line number 12. first a word from our sponsor <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts, a must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Standard deduction or itemized deduction. Looking for the itemized deduction here, noting we would only take it if higher than the standard deduction. If so, we would then be attaching the form or Schedule A. Schedule A is for the itemized deductions. You can see the categories on the left-hand side, although this is not the entire schedule. These are the hurdles that we have to clear. In other words, the standard deduction tied closely to filing status. For a single filer, we have the standard deduction 13850, double that for married 27,700, middle being head of household 20,800, and if over an age limit and or blind, we have increased standard dedu deductions for one of both of those items if single, one or four of those if married, because we have two people with those two categories for each, head of household, qualified surviving spouse, and so on and so forth. All right, quick recap. We're looking at the federal income taxes, meaning uh, the federal income tax being the major type of tax for the federal government to collect money to do what it's supposed to do, mainly defense for us. In essence, the military, we're thinking about whether or not we can deduct taxes for the calculation of federal income taxes, which would mean, of course, we can't deduct federal income taxes to calculate federal income taxes because that would result in a circle reference. But what about the state taxes? Possibly we could deduct the state taxes. However, remembering that normally in an income tax system, the natural types of deductions would be those that we had to expend in order to generate revenue as is seen in like a Schedule C, where we have income minus expenses, business deductions resulting in net income so that we're taxed on the net income. But 
sometimes they're going to include, and this happens much of what Schedule A is, other deductions that we can deduct even though they're basically personal in nature, as would be the case for normal uh, taxes for the state and locale, because those are taxes that will be dependent on your personal living choices on where you're going to be. In other words, if you paid state and local taxes as a part of your business, you would think they might be deductible on like a Schedule C as a normal and necessary business expense. But if they're personal, you would think it would not be deductible. But for some reason, some of them are, right? And we talked about the ways that the state can tax in prior presentation, which could include then the having a state income tax similar to the federal uh, income tax system or possibly a sales tax system. And we also talked about taxes on property, in this case, before real estate property, typically someone's home and the deductibility of that. And now we're taking a look at basically other property taxes, which probably isn't the big one, right? Because the big one, when you think of taxes, is the state tax, the primary tax tool they use to fund the state, which is typically a sales tax system and or an income uh, tax system. And then we have the property tax for those that own a home, which is gonna be significant. And this category then is not the big one, but still could be something that we have to keep in mind and add for the state and local personal property taxes. All right, enter on line 5C, the state and local personal property taxes you paid, but only if the taxes were based on value alone and were imposed on a yearly basis. Example, you paid a yearly fee for the registration of your car. Part of the fee was based on the car's value and part was based on its weight. You can deduct only the part of the fee that was based on the car's value. So this becomes something that seems a little bit complex, right? So now we're paying taxes on our car and you would think that that's gonna be some form of taxation, but actually only part of it is gonna be uh, the deductible part technically. And so you wanna, so, and this is something that although it's not as big of a dollar amount, it will typically come up because everybody has uh, the vehicle and so therefore are typically gonna be paying the tax. Now, again, when would this come up? Only if someone is itemizing. So if someone doesn't own a home, then most likely, of course, they don't have a mortgage and not, aren't paying the mortgage interest and don't have the property taxes, therefore are far less likely to be itemizing unless they're fairly wealthy individuals, in which case the, the tax itself could get them close to itemizing for the state income tax and so on, uh, even though there's a cap on it now. But in any case, if they are itemizing, then it becomes something that you got to pick up because they are they're almost certainly going to have a car and then you're going to have this tax that will be applicable as a standard kind of questioning point. And then the question is, how exactly are you going to calculate the fees that they're paying for their car to make sure that you're in compliance with uh, the part that is deductible versus that that is not? So example, you paid a yearly fee for the registration of your car. Mostly everybody has the car registration they have to deal with because they own a car and all places and locales are going to have that registration. Part of the fee was based on the car's value and part was based on its weight. You can deduct only the fee uh, that was based on the car's value. Okay, prepayment of next year's property taxes. Now here's the, net, the same kind of issue comes up here. We're gonna say, when do you get the deduction for property taxes? Well, the same as most other taxes for, or most other deductions for federal individual income tax purposes on a cash basis when you pay it. And then you're going to come up with a bunch of bright ideas and say, well, look, I made more income this year than I'm going to make next year because of the progressive tax system. I'm going to be in higher tax brackets. So I would like to take more deductions this year than next year. Why don't I play with the cutoffs and I'll prepay some of my stuff like taxes. I'll try to pay it in advance, getting the deduction this year and then not next year, which will be beneficial because I'm in higher tax brackets this year or something. Now, the IRS is going to not want to do that, of course. They're going to try to limit the, the, the manipulation of the tax code, which, again, if you look at like corporations, they have to use an accrual basis typically because the cash basis would allow them too much flexibility for that type of manipulation, which distorts the actual financial statements. 
for individual income taxes, we can't audit everybody that closely to make sure they're using an accrual basis. And it's too complex for most individuals to kind of have to do an accrual basis. The cash basis is already hard enough. So you stick to the cash basis, but then people are going to try to get creative and do some accrual cutoff things. And then the IRS is going to have to try to make rules to stop that from happening, right? Which one of those would be these prepayment ideas. So only taxes paid in 2023 and assessed prior to 2024 can be deducted for 2023. State or local law determines whether and when a property tax is assessed, which is generally when the taxpayer becomes liable for the property tax imposed. Line number six, other taxes. Enter only uh, one total on line six, but list the types and amounts of tax included. So we have the other taxes. So these would be obviously they don't have their own line item. So you would think they would be less common uh, items. We can put the one line here and then include the detail of them uh, on another schedule, right? So include on this line income taxes you paid to a foreign country and generation uh, skipping tax. That's the GST imp imposed on certain income distributions. Now, again, if you have foreign taxes and you're dealing with people that are paying foreign taxes, you're probably dealing with more complex returns. That's going to be a question from a taxpayer perspective, a tax preparer perspective. Do I want to be taking on clients that have uh, issues that are outside of my state even, because I'm probably going to specialize in the state that we are in if they have other states or uh, they have tax implications in multiple states that could add a level of complexity which you might say i'm not just going to take those on or maybe i will and then uh foreign if people have foreign taxes that they owe and so on and dual citizenship and basically our foreign income and that kind of thing whole nother world that can really expand the complexity of the tax return. The question from a tax preparer standpoint being, do I want to take those clients on? Do I want to specialize in those areas? Maybe that's where I want to, you know, really create value uh, possibly. And then we've got this generation skipping uh, tax. What What is that? Well, note that we have the, the estate tax or the federal government usually taxes people on an income situation, meaning we tax people when they earn the money. We don't tax their balance sheet because we already taxed it when they earned the money. So that's the idea. But when someone dies, they wanted to tax the balance sheet. They want to compile all the all the stuff that they have and tax the wealth that, that they have at that point in time. That's called an estate tax or uh, a death tax, right? So So what are people going to do if that happens, well, if you're going to tax me when I die, I'm going to try to give away all my money before I die on my deathbed, right? But if you, so then the government's going to say, well, I don't like that because now the, this, that rich person, I was, I was all waiting on my fingers were like Mr. Burns is, is going, oh, excellent, ready to take the guy's money when he dies because he's on his deathbed. But then he gave all his money to his children right before he died. And so, and so we can't have that. So then, <laughs> so then you could see that they're going to say, well, you can't do that. You can't give all your money away on the death bed side of things. So, so how are you going to limit that? Well, then you have to put in a, a, a gift, uh, a limitation on the gifts that you can give, right? So you, and that's going to lead into all kinds of, of estate planning kind of issues in terms of how can someone pass money from one generation to another? without being hit with the state tax, uh, with the with the estate tax or death tax and then income tax situations. And that's when you're saying, well, if I can't give it to my to my son or daughter, maybe I can give it to their grandchild and have a generation skipping kind of situation and so on and so forth. So that gets into estate planning, which again is usually there for higher income individuals because those would be the ones that would typically be subject to this kind of uh, estate or death tax, although I wouldn't be surprised the way things are going, because we're the money's you know the federal government is spending too much money. They're they're gonna like anything else. They might start applying it lower down, lower down the ladder at some point when they when they hit the wall in terms of spending. But that's so that's usually planning for large for higher income individuals. So you would be dealing with that kind of thing typically if you have higher income individuals and you're doing things like estate planning 
or more complex uh, tax planning situations usually. All right, tip. You may want to take a credit for the foreign tax uh, instead of a deduction. So if you have foreign taxes, then the question is, again, how are you going to be dealing with that? Because if you have taxes related to a, a foreign uh, country, they're going to have their own tax system. So the question is, who's going to get the income, the foreign country, the tax income, the United States or the other country? We don't want a situation where you're double dipping because that would be bad for the taxpayer, of course. But in order to work that out, we would need some kind of tax treaty between, in essence, uh, the two countries. So you have to see how how that works. And then and then basically what's the best way to record that on the return? Is it like a deduction that you record on it or is there a credit? So, again, that would be more of a specialized area for people that have like income, for example, in multiple countries that could be subject to uh, multiple taxes from those countries. So you may want to take a credit for the foreign tax instead of a deduction. See the instructions for Schedule 3, Form 1040, Line 1 for details. Don't include taxes you pay to a U.S. territory in this line. Instead, include U.S. territory taxes on the appropriate state and local tax line. Don't include federal estate tax on income uh, in respect of a decedent on this line, instead include it on line 16.